what's happening around the NFL. Yeah, let's start in Indianapolis. Watch out for this Darius Leonard situation coming off of back surgery, uh, not likely to be available for the start of camp. His availability will be watched closely this offseason, this training camp. Very, very important player for a team that has very high hopes for this season. He's had some injuries in years past, says he feels great, but keep an eye on that as the season gets closer. 49ers continue to talk to wide receiver Debo Samuel about a potential contract extension. This was getting touchy earlier in the offseason when he told Jeff Darlington that he wanted to be traded. But it seems like there's been a little bit of a thawing in that relationship and it's, the Niners are optimistic they can get a deal done. They just have uh, some other issues to sort through financially, including uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, their starting quarterback, who is going to be replaced, uh, we think, by Trey Lance this year as the starter, uh, has $24 million of salary that's not yet guaranteed, but would become guaranteed if he's on the roster by week one. So once he's recovered from his shoulder surgery and can start throwing here in a couple weeks, the 49ers hope they can in interest some teams in trading for him. If not, they may have to set him loose uh, by releasing him uh, onto the open market. Ooh, that would be a big blow for the 49ers hoping to get something good for Jimmy G. So let's stop down on Jimmy G and talk about him a little bit, Dan. How robust is the market? For Jimmy G. At I mean, not very. Like, it, it's it's late June, right? The time to move somebody like this would be in March before free agency, but that's right when he had the surgery. So that really put a damper on the market, and at this point, there just aren't that many teams that are that are in the market for a starting quarterback. You know, Carolina's still maybe fishing around, Seattle, uh, if he gets released, uh, but the Niners hope is that someone's situation changes, right? And, and, and now the market gets a little bigger because somebody has an injury or because somebody's situation just wasn't what they thought it was. So they're hoping that they have time to, to still do that. Yeah, he's such a talented quarterback. I mean, a lot of teams would want him. But at this point, I got to imagine the 49ers leverage is at an all-time low. Sam, do you side with conventional wisdom here that says the 49ers should move on from Jimmy G? Uh, I do only because of the uh, uh, because of what San Francisco just said. They said that Trey Lance is their starting quarterback, and so I'm not going to deny what San Francisco already admitted. But what I would deny, where I would uh, change a little bit, is that San Francisco does not need to be on our timeline. In our timeline, we're saying, man, it's got to be a trade. It has to happen now. No, let training camp come around. Let teams see what they have, or better yet, don't have in their quarterback rooms when the preseason games come, when your actual practices and scrimmages come, and then the market will grow for Jimmy Garoppolo. Right now, we're all assuming that all our quarterbacks that we have in our roster are gonna be great. Once the real season starts, at least preseason training camp, uh, the truth will come out and then the market will grow for Jimmy Garoppolo. See, if Sam Acho is my GM and we're doing that, then in theory, this could go into the season. So Dan, I wonder, oh. as you look at this, well, I mean, then there would be the financial ramifications right. if that happens. So I'm thinking maybe it couldn't go that far. They have to make a choice by them. The salary's not guaranteed. Once he's on the roster week one, mm -hmm. then, like any veteran, the salary becomes guaranteed because he can sue for a termination pay if they cut him and get the full salary. So uh, they would have to do something by then, whether it's rework the contract, whether it's trade him, whether it's release him. Uh, they're not likely to be able to carry that $24 million on this year's cap and still be able to do an extension with Debo Samuel and Nick Bosa, two guys they really want to get locked up. But that's where it gets really interesting, right? Because really quickly, at that point, Jimmy G would have to agree yeah. to go to a reduced number, and he's not likely to do that if he wants to go. Right, so uh, that, that's why the Niners are hoping the market expands, because their ideal situation wow. would be to trade him. Okay, this could get very interesting. Folks, keep an eye on the clock, especially leading up to week one, to what happens with him. All right, so... Let's move on to this. Acho, Acho, <laughs> man. It's a segment where we take a look at the trending clips and our man Sam Acho interprets them for us. So, Sam, what do you make of this guy fighting in the ring while holding a laptop and doing a Zoom call? Yo, that is hilarious. <laughs> oh, my God. So, first of all, I love I would sign up to watch the Zoom. Yeah, you asked me earlier, would I get into the ring of fight? No, but I would sign up for a weekly Zoom, watching people box with the green screen behind them. <laughs> I'm all about it. Sign me up, let me know the link, the password, oh. and set me up for recurring meetings. <laughs> this is great. Wait, I love that. Why does he have the green screen? That's probably the best part. We've all had a meeting where, where we felt like this. <laughs> Yes. All right. Wait, I got another one for you. Necklace, check out this person hopping on the ground oh. without using their arms. 
Yo, so first, first I saw somebody compare this to Squidward. I said, okay, I respect it. And then I saw the talent. Look at his right leg. Look at that right leg, left leg, right leg, left. Uh, Look at the yeah. talent. I want to go at home and try. I feel like my little kids will be going to try this when they go home. This will be the new celebration in the 2022 season. Forget the gritty. Forget all of that. We're doing this. We need to name it. How many guys can even do this? I think you could. This could be your warm-up really? your workout. I cannot do that. Imagine you're sitting there eating lunch, and then, like, this guy rolls up. <laughs> <laughs> and then, speaking of crazy, look at this. What are your thoughts on the new workout by Saints quarterback Jameis Winston? What is that? So I got two thoughts. First of all, it doesn't look like a great look for Jameis, right? Like, the weights look fake. It's like those things you get, you blow them up, and you're like, yeah, I'm lifting all this heavy weight. Now, the counterintuitive side of this is, I have done workouts where you have those little bamboo bars where it works on your stability, right? This is working shoulder stability. This is working arm strength. But no one wants to hear that. Everyone wants to laugh, and this is worth laughing about. Somebody on Twitter said it looks like the javelin from Revenge of the Nerds. I mean, this is, I get that you're doing this, but the last thing you should be doing is posting this. This is the kind of thing you do in the closet and don't tell anybody. I mean, this is crazy. Oh, by the no, way, man. got a bonus for Shoulder you. stability, arm strength, all of it. <laughs> we got a bonus for you. Over the weekend, J.J. Watt, soon to be first oh, yeah. time father in the fall, posted this photo on Twitter showing how he's getting his dad bod. Ready for the occasion? That's a dad oh, bod. Man. Stole my nope. idea. No, nope. that's, that's not a dad bod. Nope. Put that man in 300 right now. Put that man. Y'all seen 300 where they had the little things with the. Put that man in the 300. Forget football. <laughs> JJ, you had a great career, right? We were together, came out, all the stuff. Go into acting. You will make a huge living. Make a huge. You see Tom Brady make a 375 on TV? Get on that TV, JJ. Trust me. That's. All I have to say is he, he's shaming all of us dads. This is unfair. Well, again, he told my idea. I was going to do that exact picture. <laughs> you were going to do it? But now it, now it would feel silly. Dan. Okay. Well, well no, you yeah. can Dan. still do it. It's, we'll, it's we'll never too late. Posted by Friday. It's, we'll it's, see. It's, it's, I'll get on that. It's never too late. One quarterback to another, Deshaun Watson's hearing before the NFL and NFL Players Association jointly appointed disciplinary officer Sue Robinson is scheduled to begin today. Robinson will be listed as the NFL expects a lengthy suspension or is asking for a lengthy suspension for Watson while the NFL PA defends the Browns quarterback. So, Dan, let's talk about this issue. Uh, what kind of timetable should we expect as the Watson hearing is set to begin? That's the big mystery because this is the first time, Ryan, under the personal conduct policy that, that this discipline officer has been called into action, so to speak. This was a feature of the new CBA signed in 2020, uh, at the, the PA pushing for neutral arbitrator for discipline, and they got it. So this is the first personal conduct policy that, that's gotten to this point. So we're all going to learn about this together, and that means us, that means the NFLPA, that means the NFL. They don't know how it's going to work or how long she's going to take. I can tell you this, she's already... Uh, gone over some of the evidence. She's already had some pre-trial briefings, uh, and now she'll hear the cases from both sides today. It's possible that hearing could spill over into another day or two. It's also possible it could end today. In terms of when she'll rule, I, I mean, I, it drives me crazy to be on television and say, I don't know, but, <laughs> but I don't, because no one does. And, and, and you know, the, the hope from all sides is to have something done by training camp, which is a month away. And it's obviously reasonable to expect that, uh, but obviously we can't know for sure because we haven't seen her process. Yeah, stuff. I think people have to understand there's a new person in a new role. We don't know their precedent or how fast they work. They've got all the information in, but still it could take some time. It could be short, it could be long. We'll see how it plays out. Now, I have to imagine that we got to this point because there was no settlement between yeah. the NFL and Deshaun Watson. So what might we expect as far as discipline is concerned. My understanding is the NFL is going to push for a suspension of, of the full season, at least. And, and uh, the settlement talks didn't really go anywhere. Watson's people had been of, of the position that he shouldn't be punished at all. He did nothing wrong. The league says, uh, you know, they want a year. So they really weren't able to make a lot of progress. Uh, and, and not that, I mean, you still, it still could happen. Like, as you well know, I mean, a settlement could happen at any point. It just doesn't sound like either side expects that at this point. So uh, the league will argue for the full year suspension. The Players Association will argue that that doesn't fit with any kind of precedent uh, and that uh, they don't hold owners to the same standard as players. And, you know, we'll see if that carries the day because that argument from the PA has never really worked with the NFL, but now this is a fresh set of ears. Yeah, you never know how that fresh set of ears might hear that information and whether that could change this landscape.